Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and currently we are focusing on multivariate calculus. We, what we have seen uh, as a derivative is nothing but suppose if I have a function fx then I would like to know if my x changes to x plus small value epsilon then how much is my function changing because of that right that's what we have seen so far so we had one variable x and if that changes then how is my function going to change and that is known as derivative right but in case of multivariate uh, calculus what happens is you know uh, we have more variables that means the function is not just defined by x but we also have something called as y and say for example your function looks something like x square plus y cube say for example right so x is a variable and y is another variable in our housing price project it could be x could be the area and y could be say number of bedrooms in that house right so typically you will see this notation d of f with respect to x and that is when we take the derivative with respect to x so derivative of x squared is 2x and because y is constant with respect to x so it will be 0 similarly if we have derivative of f with respect to y then we know that x is not changing with respect to y because there is no term of y within that so it is 0 plus it will become 3 times of y square so this is the concept of partial derivative that means uh, when I'm considering the change in one of the variable, I'm hoping that the other variable is constant or static, okay? And that is how we calculate our uh, partial, and this is known as partial derivative. All right, now let's look into another concept called second derivative. Okay, so we have seen uh, what is derivative, right? So for example, if my fx is equal to, this is slightly different than partial derivative, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. So say I have fx of say x cube plus 2x, right? So this is one of my expression. So my first derivative will be 3 times x square plus 2. That is my first derivative, right? And my second derivative is nothing but I'm taking the derivative of the first derivative. So that means it becomes 6 times x plus 0. Okay, now what is the purpose of second derivative? Okay, the purpose is, uh, in, in real life is, when we say that we are trying to find a maximum or minimum, what we typically do is, we make this first derivative equal to zero. And based on that calculation, we try to find out at which location did we get our maximum or minimum, right? Now, if somebody asks, asks me, how sure am I that that is actually the point for maximum or minimum so in that case we take the second derivative to prove that point okay so in our next video we'll focus on this one but just for the time being keep this in mind that where we are using second derivative we'll actually explain you in detail that how this uh, first derivative and second derivatives are used together to come up with the idea that I am sure that this is my local minimum or this is my local maxima so in order to prove those points we need the second derivative or higher order derivatives so we might also need somewhere third derivative right and that will be equal to six so this higher order derivative is just to make us uh, you know makes a surety that either we are at the local minimum or local maximum okay so this is the purpose of second derivative but don't worry we'll show you with more example as we always do but just for the time being keep in mind that second derivative and higher order derivative are used for that purpose all right so i hope you have learned something new today so thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel